Hello everybody, welcome back. Here's our next lesson, which is going to cover multiplication of fractions. In the previous lesson, we went over how to model them. In this lesson, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the straight-up arithmetic that's involved with multiplication of fractions. This is not going to have anything to do with the area model, although right here I'm showing you a model. For this lesson, we're not going to do any modeling. It's all just going to be straight-up computation and arithmetic. Your learning target has you, the student, you will compute and simplify multiplication problems with fractions. So pretty straightforward. Uh, this was another thing that we covered in the last lesson, that of equals times. We should all know that by now. Here we go. I'm going to kind of talk you through this step by step. And when you see a fraction problem, you know when you read of in a problem, it means multiply. Another thing that you need to know, step two, is that you don't have to find an LCD. You don't have to find a least common denominator. When you added when you subtracted fractions, you had to find the least common denominator of 2 and 9, which is 18. But with multiplication and division, I might add, with multiplication and division, you don't have to find an LCD. No LCD, which is kind of good news. You don't have to do that. So what do you do instead of an LCD? Well, you just multiply. That's all you got to do. Multiply left to right. That's it. What's 1 times 4? It's 4. Very, very simple. 2 times 9 is 18. There you have it. There's your answer. Kind of. Kind of. Sort of. But that's it. 4 eighteenths. What does that reduce to? Well, let's divide by 2. When you divide 4 and 18 by 2, you get 2 ninths. There you go. 2 ninths is the answer. So this may seem a little bit weird to you, because I know you spent the entire adding and subtracting unit of fractions, finding an LCD and changing the fractions around and and doing a lot of work before you ever did any adding or subtracting. But when you multiply or divide, you really just have to go in a left to right manner. That's it. You're done. Next step is to simplify your answer. Somehow this got moved down. That should be 4 over 18. But we already went over that. Okay, let's go ahead and go through some practice problems right here. So 5 eighths times 6 tenths. All we have to do is multiply left to right. So what's 5 times 8? 5 times 8 is 58, right? And now it's not 58, not 58. What am I doing? 5 times 8 is 40. We all know that. Okay, 6 times 10 is 60. Very simple math there. So that's part of your answer. Now, as mathematicians, you guys should know that you should never think you're done. Always think there's more to do. And we do have more to do. We can reduce this. Now, we can reduce by 2, but let's reduce by 10. Reduce by 10 seems like an easy way to do it. They both have matching zeros, so obviously 10 works. 40 divided by 10 is 4. 60 divided by 10 is 6. And then all you have to do is divide by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 thirds is your answer. Now for all you smarty pants out there, if you went ahead and divided these by 20 as your first step, is there anything wrong with that? Not at all. I'm just kind of approaching this the way a typical math student might look at this. They might not look at this and go, oh yeah, 20 works. But if you know that 20 works, great. That makes it one step. 40 divided by 20 is 2. 60 divided by 20 is 3. We get the same result, just faster. Okay? It doesn't really matter. I don't care how you do it, as long as you do it right. Okay? Make sure you divide. When you reduce fractions, you're dividing by the same number, though. I'm dividing the top number and the bottom number by the same value. Okay, next problem right here. We have 7 eighths times 5 fifths. 5 fifths. So 7 eighths times 5 fifths. Now when we do the arithmetic right here, 7 times 5 is 35, and 8 times 5 is 40. So let's go ahead and reduce that. What number can we divide 35 and 40 by? And I believe 5 works. So 35 divided by 5 is 7. 40 divided by 5 is 8. But wait a minute. Wait a minute here. Look at this. We ended up with 7 eighths again. 7 eighths times 5 fifths is 7 eighths. How is that possible? How could that be true? It probably has something to do with this fraction. What is that fraction right there? 5 fifths. What does that equal? It equals 1, doesn't it? 1. Anything over itself is 1. You know, 9 ninths is 1. 17 seventeenths equals 1. So basically what we're doing is we're doing 7 eighths times 1. What's anything times 1? Itself. That's called the identity property. You don't need to write that down. That's how that works. 5 fifths is 1. So we could have went ahead and did the arithmetic. and you, Or, like I said, some of you mathematicians out there who are clever, you might have looked at this and, and went, oh, this is 1. 
I'm not going to do anything else other than just write 7 eighths, because I know that anything times itself is, anything times 1 is itself. So if you just wrote 7 eighths, great, good for you. If you wrote 35 fortieths and then reduced it and got 7 eighths, anything wrong with that? Anything? No. Nothing is wrong with that at all. Okay, here's our next problem. We have 2 ninths times 9 halves. Basically, same numbers. 2 and 9, 9 and 2. Except in one of the fractions that's flipped around. What that's called is reciprocal. We don't need to really kind of work with the reciprocal yet or really talk about that in depth. Look what happens when you multiply 2 ninths by its reciprocal, 9 halves. 2 times 9 is 18, and 9 times 2 is 18, and a number over itself equals one whole. That's the answer. So when you multiply by a reciprocal, and we're going to talk about this word more in depth when we get into division. Let's just talk about this briefly here. When you multiply by the reciprocal, let's take uh, 3 sevenths for instance. 3 sevenths times its flipped version of itself, 7 thirds, you get 21 over 21. What does that equal? That equals 1. Same thing. You get the same result no matter what. Let's take another one. 9 fifteenths times 15 ninths. 9 fifteenths times 15 ninths. What does that equal? 135 over 135. Yeah, those are big numbers, but still equals 1. There you have it. And you do it like this, and you get 1. It's fine. You might not be looking for those things right away. You're just kind of learning this. You're just trying to understand how multiplication works. If you can see that, great. All the power to you. Okay, so this was a pretty short lesson. All I did was go over the arithmetic here. And what were some things that you learned here? One thing, uh, you just learned that you just multiply from left to right. Everything gets worked out. You don't have to find an LCD. You'll also remember that when we added fractions, I don't want to talk about this too much because it, it might confuse you, but when you added fractions like 3 sevenths plus 1 seventh, you didn't touch the denominators, did you? You didn't touch those values. That was a big point I made. Never add, never subtract denominators, ever. Okay, but in this case, we didn't touch it. But if this was a multiplication problem, 3 sevenths times 1 seventh, yeah, everything gets touched. Everything gets worked out. 3 times 1 is 3. 7 times 7 is 49. And that's in lowest terms already. So everything gets worked out. No LCDs required at all. And this should remain unsaid, but I'm going to say it anyway. Always simplify. You better simplify your answers. And that does it for this lesson, everybody. Hope everyone understood this. Pretty straightforward when you multiply. Everyone have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow.